Hey guys, it's Jaden and welcome back. Today we're talking about Star Trek Discovery, season three, episode five, Die Trying. Uh, you know, there are some thoughts, but I do finally feel like we're really hitting that groove. We really hit that plateau, not plateau, we're cruising, right? We're cruising towards the ending. And I just have to say, I'm here for it. Let's get into really just a quick rundown of what happened so I can get into like really my thoughts overall. This episode, we're getting Saru's log basically talking about, well, oh my God, Starfleet. I'll be honest, I think by the end of the episode, I understood more of where his log was coming from because he really values the idea of Starfleet um, and he believes in their mission and their goals probably a little bit more than uh, Burnham. A lot more and I will get to that later because that's a good point I want to get to so essentially arrive at the Federation it's time to go the disco crew essentially is nerding out over everything literally everything they're basically in like its own protected space and it's being powered by all the ships that are in there it's actually pretty cool visually it like it was really just it was really cool like I'm just gonna be honest it was really cool but when we get there, essentially, I was thinking, like, they are a little too happy because I don't know the Star Free. I don't know the I don't know the Star Free. I don't know this Federation. I don't know who they are. And just like I don't know them, they don't know them either. So like I don't know why they're acting a little too happy. But I guess they're just happy to be home with friendly faces, not having to fire at somebody, so I guess. But I'll be honest, Admiral Vance, who we meet, is the head of Starfleet, essentially. And he basically had their ship stopped. He scanned it. He said, oh, give me a dear at all. Give me Burnham. Give me Saru. Let's talk. Um, and Vance just does not believe them whatsoever. He's like, I don't know who you are. I don't know who you think you are. But like, you know, time travel has been ruled out. You don't know about the temporal wars? Which I was like, callback. This is what I've been asking for. Like these little callbacks. We could have been had this. Been had this since the beginning. So essentially, Vance ends up talking to all of them. He basically lets Adira know, like, Adira Tall know, like, I knew your previous life. I don't know you. Let's make sure you're checked out and all in good health. Cool. Work. Then basically he debriefs them. And little things, we, we find out little things about, like, the future. Just like a little, oh, okay, well, we haven't seen you since. Or, oh my gosh. For example, like, we found out that, um... Saru's Kelpian planet, I know it's a real name, I just don't remember the name. His planet um, joined the Federation a while ago, like 500 years ago. We also learned that, um, I believe she's a lieutenant, Nan. Uh, like, well, basically her species, the Abar Abarzan, Abar I can't say it right now, and it sucks, because just like Jack Zia, like, I just couldn't say it at the moment. So, uh, yeah, the Abarzan species also joined the Federation, and there's just so many different changes. The Federation went from being 380 planets to about 38 because of the burn. And I, I think like this is interesting because we're really getting into those intricacies of like the burn itself. We love to see it, truly. Um, but yeah, the Federation HQ is now like the civilian home of like leadership of all of the Federation. And it's just pretty wild to see them all like so technologically advanced, but so compact, but they really can't do anything. Like, it's just weird. Um, also, while we're there, there seems to be an issue going on. They're trying to do the Federation's work and save these people. And that'll come back to play later on. Vance basically tells them, after the whole temporal war situation, like, we don't trust you. Let's get to know you. Uh, you're going to have your whole entire crew debriefed. And that's just it. We're going to take your ship. We're going to split your crew up. Which is like, if you basically, you know, pass, you get reintegrated into Starfleet. I'm going to be honest. Vance is moving too fast. Like, I get that he needs the spore drive technology, but it would be easier to work with the people who created it than basically tell them, like, I don't know, it's just kind of weird, right? So, essentially, the crew all finds this stuff out. They end up having to get interrogated by um, everyone, and they're basically interrogated by holograms, and it's pretty wild because they're just, like, it's all different little headshots about their mind scope and, like, everything that they've been through. If I do say so, though, I think, you know, let's just go down the whole Philippa Giorgio storyline of everything. She, I think, had the most interesting interview. I just find it so interesting. Like, obviously, she loves playing the system very differently than everyone else does. And um, she, like, really just starts blinking at the people. And, like, basically, it, the holograms disintegrate. It's, it's 
pretty wild, pretty weird. Um, and then I'm pretty sure this guy that was in a room was actually Section 31 from the future. Because, one, he's all dressed in black, just randomly sitting there, like, standing there. And then they start talking, and they start really having, like, a, just a duel. They were just reading each other for Phil, each of them. I was like, oh, well, you don't know this. And then Phil was like, oh, you don't know this. It was pretty wild. Um, come to the conclusion that, you know, the Terrans are... We're not having any more Terran crossovers in the future, basically, because of how the parallel universe on the Terran side basically expanded, and they haven't had a crossover in 500 years. I mean, or the 25th century or something like that. I don't know. It was weird, right? There's a lot of fives in this episode, but like either way, Georgia is pretty much the only one from her side that is over here now at this point, or probably not the only one, but like... She can't go home, basically. Um, but anyway, that was pretty much her whole storyline. But I think she got messed up by that. I'm sorry. I think she got messed up with that questioning. So, like, we'll, we'll see where that goes. Love to see that. I really think that she's really playing a really good part. We love Michelle Yeoh doing it well. Burnham essentially convinces Vance to let the Discovery crew help them, help themselves, help the people that are in need actually on the ship. And when they do that, it comes to the conclusion that they were something with a virus and it was wrong and just radiation. And the only thing that can save them is a plant from like an unirradiated plant. So they have to go to the seed vault, which is currently run by uh, an abra abra abraction, ab aberzon, aberzon. I can't say it, but non species run by their family essentially. So essentially Discovery and their watchers get there, they receive them from getting them out of like this ion storm, this radiation stuff that's happening. They beam aboard uh, the USS Tikov, because that's what the seed vault's called, and they essentially end up um, meeting Dr. Adis. Adis? Adis. So they end up meeting Dr. Adis, and he happens to be out of phase, which I was like, haven't we had this happen before multiple times? Like, seemed like a little callback to uh, a couple of things, honestly. There's been multiple times when people have been out of phase, but so yeah, essentially they save this man and they basically convince him because he was really just trying to find a cure for his family because they were hit with some weird storm a couple weeks ago, which basically killed his entire family. When they killed his entire family, he kind of went crazy trying to look for a cure. They were actually dead. He even put them in cryo freeze. It was wild. Um, Burnham basically talks him into being like, hey, um, we really need this. Can you please help us? Yada, 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 yada. And they do. I mean, he eventually does help them, and that's really cool. But, like, they save him from being out of phase. Um, and then that's when we find out that Non is going to stay there. We learned a lot of things about Non, but, like, that's when Non's going to basically stay there to protect um, the seed vault because uh, Dr. Addis was not leaving his family uh, whatsoever. And she protects the seed vault in, like, Starfleet's honor. That is a successful mission. Uh, Vance and Burnham and Saru all back at Federation headquarters essentially have a great conversation allowing the Discovery crew to stay together which is really important honestly because they, they went through too much trauma which Vance does know like y'all have trauma I was like yeah we know uh, but you're not gonna separate us for it basically and then Burnham basically asked about the burn there's just a lot of a little bit of tidbits about that it was nothing notable it's just like there's a lot of theories on like what happened with the burn however Burnham does pick up on some weird thing that um, we have like this musical thing going on. Everyone kind of knows like this lullaby or some form of it. And we saw it on the USS Tika. We saw it on um, when a dear, dear tall was basically playing the, uh, the cello. We saw it, um, people just saying like, yeah, we kind of just know some form of it. It's weird. And it doesn't make any sense because if you, it just doesn't make any sense, right? It just doesn't. But obviously that's gonna play a good, a good key into like figuring out what happened with the burn. Here, so here's some notable mentions to the episode. Uh, Saru calling Burnham number one. I was like, oh, wow. This is not the same show from season one, but at the same time, like, this is what it should have been. Like, it's just so cool. Like, I don't know. Would I prefer Burnham as a captain? I think so, but I think that Saru is really helpful being the captain because he's a really calm demeanor, even though he's more pacifist and more passive than Burnham. Um, he, he brings a lot of, like, non-emotional thinking. Like, as much as Burnham is raised by the Vulcans and has that logic on her side, she's in a very emotional person. <laughs> like, um, honestly, a little bit too much emotion sometimes. And I think that's, that's for her better. Um, she takes, like, the, Spock is a very emotional person to, like, the next level, like, crazy. Um... 
we end up seeing the USS Constitution and the USS Voyager, but their next iterations of it, like, awesome. I don't know. It was just really cool seeing that inside their shipyard of just seeing all the different ships that were around. And I was like, oh my god, wow, what a callback. I, I just, I was really happy to see that. It was really cool. It was just great visual. Um, the new Starfleet outfits, we got to see them, I'll be honest. Some of them are kind of boring. Uh, Low-key boring. No, high-key boring. Eh, you know, I like the new badges, but y'all aren't really giving anything. Like, kind of boring. Um, it's so funny how this is the episode where we get the most character growth from Nan, and essentially she's, like, gone. I don't think we're going to see her again, but she's gone from the show. I think it was a really interesting dialogue and, like, getting to know, like, her family and, like, how she basically left, um, and they disgraced her, and it just, it was really interesting learning about, like, her, right? And what, like, her planets and what they do for each other and stuff like that. I don't know. It was most character growth we got out of her, and we didn't really, we're not even gonna get to see more of her. It kind of sucks. What, again... Discovery is giving those side characters more room to really grow and be themselves, which I do appreciate. Just, can we do it a little faster and not, like, kill them off or move them somewhere else? Um, I do want to know why does Saru know pre-Renaissance Earth history? And it's, like, call back to that last week's episode when I was mentioning, like, why do y'all keep mentioning the middle <laughs> of, like, the, 19, the 1900s? Why do y'all keep mentioning, like, random Earth history events? I guess it's deeply ingrained in Starfleet, so they got to know a little bit about everybody. But, like, it's just so odd that uh, Saru, from a completely different planet, it's, like, mentioning artists and um, that are pioneering art techniques about death and exclusion and stuff like that. Like, why do you know this? Um, I do also want to say that uh, Burnham and Saru, ugh, Burnham and Saru are really trying to find that balance for themselves. And that's, I think that's going to be a hard thing at the moment because like Burnham really is still like, I'm gonna do what I want. But at the same time, like she brings a lot of points. She's, she's not really ever wrong, but Saru really does. I think takes a lot of what Burnham does and like gives it tact. So that's easier to like navigate, work within, navigate, work within. Um, Booker's coming back next week, but overall this episode was really, really a discussion on like, I think of hope and duty and like family and I think that it was, it wasn't a bad episode. I feel like we're not really getting anything that's like overall boring. We're, we're getting episodes that are just, they're here. They're here and that's, what, that's what's happening. I don't know how else to say it. Like I wish I could bring more to this conversation, but like I think this was overall a good episode. I think us having a federation established, a new federation in the future established, says a lot. I would have loved, 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 now that I'm thinking about what could have done the show a little bit better, if we would have had this mystery for them, it would have probably been too many plot lines, but this mystery of like, this mysterious ship is in the future. So how'd they get there? Ah, well, like there's just so many different options that they could have done to get here faster, but I'm happy that they're here. Um, I'm really excited to see if uh, Giorgio and really how does she reconcile with the fact that she is pretty much never ever going home and she's kind of here for someone else and not really for herself. Uh, I really would love to see um, them retrofit Discovery with some new uh, 34th, 33rd century tech. Like, I really would love to see that happen. 32nd? I don't know. Whatever century they're in. Uh, that would be interesting. That would be something interesting and cool. I'm really excited for next week because Booker's coming back. And I think Booker really does, like, break up the show from, like, the the norm of like, oh, well, we're doing Starfleet things. Uh-huh. Like, and I think that allows us to really explore the universe itself, which is really awesome. Uh, there's nothing else I really have to add in this episode. Honestly, let me know what your thoughts are because like, that's just kind of where I'm at at this point. Um, it's been a long week. I know my video's late, but I have to, have to keep it going anyway. Thank y'all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, let's talk next week. Bye.